got so I've got the back of the controller here and I always like to do a test feel so I pretend I've got a controller in my hand and that I'm pushing all the buttons and I'm working on the analogs and I'm working on everything to make sure I think I know how everything's going to feel and then what I do is I normally take a sharpie and I go in the back and I try to mark where my finger placement is just to try to make sure that uh, I get close to that when I'm getting ready to cut. Now I've done this a bunch of times and I do recommend that you do test it because I have semi long fingers, some people may have shorter fingers, some people may have longer fingers. So it's just really up to you how you want to make your holes but please make sure that you test fit it to make sure you can kind of envision where your fingers will be placed while you're actually uh, gaming. So uh, now that I've got my dot where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and, and get ready to start the cutting process. Uh, I've got my drill here and I'm going to widen out so you guys can see what's going on. And I'm going to start with a mm, semi-small drill bit just to get the hole because i got to make a really big hole here. Uh, this is a big button but I like it because it's a lot of surface area and it should be fairly easy for me to uh, work with. So I'm super excited to uh, try it out. And it basically just will go in, screw in, then this part screws to the back and you're done. So. Again, that hole's got to be massive, so I've got to make sure that I get a really good angle. So, what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to look and see, okay, there's the hole, here's the button. This has got to go in here about there. i got to take it back a little bit because if I put it right on, the, on this hole, it may run off the edge and cut into the outer of my controller. And I don't want to do that because it may damage the integrity of it. And if I squeeze it really hard, it may break right there. So I want to go a little further in uh, just to be safe. Uh, again, I probably made that look a little easier than it actually is um, because I've done this so many times. But I can tell you guys um, that just comes from a lot, a lot of practice. So definitely try to, you know, depending on what drill you use, try to drill something first to, to make sure you got the hang of it. Because what'll happen is if you if you don't go into this sure and you're not holding it good, it'll wiggle on you and you'll end up running a drill line down your controller and while you may not care about that, that's one of the things that I don't like to see because I'm not a perfectionist, but I do like it to look as close to stock as possible. And I think that you guys will agree that that just makes it look more professional versus if you've got this big squiggly line going down the, the side of your controller. So yeah, uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here with a much bigger drill bit now that I've got a pilot hole and try to get this whole board out a little bit right. now I've got a bigger hole and the next thing I'm gonna do this is nothing but plastic so I'm gonna get in here and start to clean this off a little bit because it's it's looking a little hairy and I've got a Dremel tool that I didn't bring out because uh, I don't think I'm gonna need it but if you do come into a situation where you've got a lot of excess you can use a Dremel tool to clean this out and it'll take care of this plastic no problem for you. Now I poke through there looks about where I want it to be. I'm just scraping off this plastic before it hardens so I can get a good edge. And another thing you can do is take a screwdriver, a flathead, and run it through here and just twist it. That works also very well uh, in this particular instance. That You see this right here? This is why test fitting is so important. And let me get my light so you can see what I'm talking about. You see up in there? With that rumble motor right there, that big button's not gonna fit. And that's okay, because I'm gonna actually take that rumble motor out, so there's gonna be absolutely nothing here. And that's a preference uh, decision that I'm making, because I don't like to have rumble motors in my FPS controllers anyway. 
Uh, I've got a controller that I use when I'm not playing FPS, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, if you do not want to modify the integrity of your controller, do not go with a big button. You go, you're going to have to go with a uh, with smaller buttons like this all the way around. And if you want to do that, that's fine. I don't mind hacking this thing up because it's all for you guys and it's all for science. So we're going to uh, continue drilling this out till we get the size that we want. I just want to take a quick second to show you guys that. We're closer to a circle now, as you guys can see. And once this button goes in, you won't see any of this anyway, but it needs to be closer to a circle. And I think we got what we need here for the install. I think so. If we don't, we're close. I'm gonna try to get an angle to thread this thing in here. I think we got what we need. And I'm just trying to thread it. And I think I'm off just a little bit. So, I'm gonna whip out my Dremel tool to clean this up. So give me one second, I'll be right back. All right guys, so I've whipped out the Dremel tool and what I'm gonna do is clean this edge up just a little bit to make it a make it more of a circle versus an oval. And that'll, that should give me the, the clearance that I need to get this done. And I'm just going in there to get it, get everything cleaned up a little bit. Please be careful right here because you can definitely damage something if you're not careful. That's where your precision work comes into handy. And again, always measure. Don't just think you got it. Because I think I was close to where I needed to be a second ago. Yep. Just had to clean the edge up. Now, that looks factory pretty much. You don't see any hangover. The hole's not too big. It went right in and it installed beautifully. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to twist lock this guy into place. And this just twists in and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about once I get it gripped. Just takes a second to lock it into place. And you can use a, you can use a uh, wrench on this because it's a standard bolt size, but I'm not gonna do that once I get it in here. I'm just going to uh, put a little glue on it to make sure it holds it in place. Uh, now let me show you guys with the light. As you can see there, it looks really good. And it's got the, the, the bolt head on it, so everything looks good. So this guy is ready to be soldered when I'm ready. And on the back here, it's got a really nice look to it. Looks. Uh, semi-professional but it's, it's a nice looking button I'm gonna install the next one and that's going to be that for this video all right guys so I've installed one button I'm gonna show you this other button installation real quick um, again before I get started what I like to do is put my hands on it and as you can see man I love that placement it's right where I play and I can rest my finger on it and I don't have to actually hit it with this part I like to hit it with the second area of the bend of my bird finger so that works really great I like that particular placement for that button and now I'm going to place the uh, jumping button somewhere in here and anywhere in here will suffice but I like it to be kind of symmetrical so I'm going to go right here just to see what I got Make sure I got a good spot there. And got some red on it. So I'm gonna get that done in a second. I just got a little marker on my red button. And I told you I'm kinda you know, got it off. Alright, so now that I've got the spot marked, I'm gonna go in for the kill and get ready to make sure that I've got a good placement. Let me just double check because I want to make sure that I've got it. And I don't quite like the placement that I came up with. 
little high for me. So I'm gonna go a little lower, about right there, to get what I want. And a little rubbing alcohol will take the Sharpie off, the Sharpie point that you made off. So don't worry about that if that if that becomes an issue. So I'm just gonna check one more time. Really like that placement. It, it, my hands naturally go there. So yeah, I think that's where we're gonna go with this. So that I've got the spot about picked out. made my incision things looking good there if you're going to be doing this kind of thing guys definitely invest in a good set of uh, bits because it is uh, quite important to the process so now that I've got that in I'm just going to hone this spot in and make sure that I get a good size hole This is one of those you have to really be careful because these buttons are the hardest to make them look factory. Uh, if you screw this up, you will not have a factory look. Your button will look like crap. Your controller will look like crap. Now it's just a little too small. So I need to go back in here, make it a little bigger, a little bigger, and again, doesn't take much. Don't like lay on it. You, you're, you're doing precise work here, guys. So I think I'm still not quite big enough. I need to go just a little bigger. And it's okay to do these steps because this is very important. I think that got it. The hole is about the right size. And we're just gonna double check. All right, that looks textbook. If you look at it, make sure I get some light from the other angle sorry about these fucking shadows I'm not working in my normal space I've got to clean that out but that looks awesome uh, looks good placement looks good let me just make sure you hear this little clicking so listen for it perfect so we got it in next thing we're gonna do is put some hot glue in there uh, once I clean it up and I just want to make sure that I get all of this rough area off because you can actually see that all right guys, so I cleaned up a little bit and I've got a kind of close up just to show you my hole right there. And here is my button. And I like to put my button in with the points facing so I can get to them. That's a preference thing. But I generally work on these two points, not those two. And what I mean, let me get something that I can point with. Um, I normally work on the shorter distance points. So I work from here to here, uh, but these, these are the same and these are the same on this button. I know it because I've messed one up before. The easiest way not to get screwed up is to crop crisscross. So do that one, solder this one and this one, or this one and this one. But since I know this particular button very well, I can do the two top and be fine. And it doesn't really matter as long as one of them's positive and one of them's negative because it's just a momentary switch. Uh, on this other button, I generally, it's the same way. Go ahead so I can show you. It's the same way, the only difference is there's only two versus four. So it's, a, it's just a bigger momentary switch. So now that I've got it about in place, what I'd like to do is grab my glue gun here and make sure that I can, I like to pick it up. So let me pick it up guys and I'll show you what it's gonna look like to make sure that I get what I need. Be very careful when you're applying the glue because you can, mess yourself up here you get glue in that button and it won't go down you got trouble on your hands so be generous but also be smart and if you have a, any glue over don't worry about it let that dry I got my finger kind of stuck so I'm gonna use a drill bit to pry my finger up Hold this down, give it a chance to dry. Man, this thing pulling on forever. This glue dries really quickly. That's what it looks like. 
uh, is I put a generous amount of glue in there, uh, amount of glue in there, and I may come back and add a little more later. But I just got enough across the back and bottom to hold it in. And once this glue hardens, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, I don't think you're gonna have a whole lot of issue. I gotta get my bit out of there. There you go. So yeah, there we have it. Um, and I can go back once it gets hard. It, I would not like go pressing on this immediately. I would let it get good and, and hard before I start fooling around. But I think this is going to be a go. And an easy way to check it is, well, we'll wait till it gets dry. But here's the final result of what it looks like. So I've got my knifing button. That's a bigger button. I've got my jumping button. That's a smaller button. And let me sit it down so I can in the lights I can show you and that's how it looks both buttons are really clean modify modified and I should have no problem soldering these up and having them work uh, once I get the circuit board which is the tougher part done but that's how you uh, add your buttons now it's up to you how you want to do this uh, but I recommend doing this step first because this is going to give you the best idea of what the feeling is for your particular controller and uh, yeah you can go from there and I know that this particular fit is a good one for me feels great my fingers rest on those two spots naturally so i'm not hunting for them perfect fit give me a lot of likes show some love i'm taking a lot of time doing this uh i really appreciate you guys and i know you guys appreciate these videos see you in the next one i'm out peace